Buongiorno, Gerardo. Buongiorno, John. Maybe we will, we will be able to enjoy a good glass of wine on other planet. What we should do is start to, to think about what can be a, a, a real rate, uh, premium rate, for, for in order to transfer this kind of risk from, mm. from the people, from the astronaut itself, to the insurance, to the insurance market. And I, I think that is is super interesting because the same exercise can be done for a lot of new amazing technology. Right? So we do not know the rate of failure of quantum transmission. The nice thing of the issue of the digital revolution that make the stuff global, you know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you start to think about your country, but at the end, I think that in India is it's happening the same, in China is happening the same, in US is happening the same. So yeah, maybe it's not Italy, it's the, it's the mobility, you know, that is changing all over the world and insurance is following. Initially, tech was seen as a disruptor to the industry and, and perhaps it was uh, in its early stages, but it shouldn't be seen as a threat. Um, it's, it, it's a necessity. Uh, it's, the industry needs it and needs to embrace it. And likewise, the way I view conversations like this and collaborating uh, across the globe with other InsureTech communities is we have so much to learn from each other. So today at InsureTech crosses the pond uh, and then some. We come to you from Milan, Italy. I sat down with Gerardo Di Francesco. That's my Canadian pronunciation uh, of, uh, of his name. Gerardo is the... Uh, founder and current general secretary of uh, the Italian InsureTech Association. Uh, Gerardo founded the community uh, a little over a year ago, comes from the industry uh, and is also a managing partner in a brokerage based out of Italy. Uh, Gerardo is involved in the industry, industry in many different ways. And um, we actually decided today to talk about space exploration uh, and being an interplanetary species and the role that insurance plays uh, in making that possible. Really interesting stuff. If anyone thought insurance was boring, buckle up. You're going to learn from this conversation. Uh, and this will be the first of many to come just on this SpaceX topic. There's so much to talk about here. Uh, we went almost an hour and um, this is just scratching the surface. So enjoy. So, buongiorno, Gerardo, how are you today? Buongiorno, John, I'm fine. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. I'm really excited to sit down with you today. We, uh, we connected uh, a few weeks or maybe a few months back now uh, in this uh, InsureTech community. Um, and I was told uh, as far as InsureTech goes in Italy, you were the guy I need to speak to. And uh, I was really, uh, really fascinated after our first conversation because I thought I was just talking to another community organizer who was passionate about the cause, which you are. Um, but it turns out, you know, you've got some other things that you, you know, kind of laced into the conversation like space exploration. And um, I, I, I got to admit, like preparing for this discussion was a challenge because I certainly don't consider myself to be an expert at all in that area. And Gerardo, I, I almost feel like we're like, we're, we're going to need multiple segments to have this conversation. I almost feel like this is going to be like a three or four part series <laughs> to talk about, <laughs> to really do the topic justice. And it's the really cool thing about this is that it's uh, an, a part of insure tech that is, is evolving and will continue to evolve just because of the nature of it. Like, you know, taking a, spe a species uh, from their natural habitat and going to another planet and how insurance kind of works all into that. I know we'll talk about other things today too, but you know, just really fascinating. And I think there's, there's a lot of depth um, and a lot of breadth to, to this particular topic. So. Yeah, indeed. And yeah, I think that, um, People engaged in the daily activity to boost issue tech worldwide. Uh, every day has to fight with, uh, you know, the, the the legacy that we are bringing on our shoulder, and and we forget that the, the innovation that actually is the cause that we is bringing us to to, to yeah. do what, well what, what we are what we are doing. 
the innovation is not only the, the API digital transformation and you know I mean RPA and on machine yeah. learning, but uh, I mean insurance needs to support also the innovation of our species and and the space economy is something uh, definitely uh, a, a core part of this innovation of the human being. So yeah. yeah uh, when when we fight for for the innovation in the insurance industry, we we do not have to forget that there is also this part of this, this part of the dream, this part of the cause yeah. that is the, the innovation of the rest of the of the all the industries. Because as you know, I mean the space economy involved everything, agri tech and, and yeah. physics and maths and, and uh, energy and uh, yeah, yeah, a lot a lot of interesting stuff. Fascinating. It's uh, absolutely fascinating. So, you know, I'll, I'll start out with with some just general introductions here. So, Gerardo De Francesco, you're the um, you're the general secretary for the Italian InsurTech Association. Uh, I believe you're also the founder. Um, when did yeah. you just as a, a basic intro, uh, Gerardo? When did you uh, start the community, um, the IA, no, uh IIA? Yeah, we last we we started in this project uh, uh, 13 months ago during okay. the the first lockdown in Italy, the Italian lockdown, and uh, yeah, uh, and, and the, the the reason why is that I'm an entrepreneur and uh, my company is a Wide Group SPA SPA that is an issue tech broker aggregator. So. Um, since a lot of years, uh, I'm involved in uh, the issue tech environment, and um, me, together my, with my partners and a lot of colleagues, we 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 decided that I mean, actually, Italy was one of the places all over the world where insurance born, no, and a lot of centuries yeah. ago. And uh, uh, by the way, in terms of investment innovation. Uh, Today we, we are one of the, the the last countries that is innovating the, the insurance industry. So we decided that uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we need to do something. And then what we did was was the Italian InsurTech Association. It is a, a community, okay, a space where we share thought. We we we, we suggest stuff to the authority. We 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 make analysis report. Uh, and uh, learning and teaching and yeah and these are very cool things and uh, so uh, for this three year I chair like a uh, general secretary yep. and uh, yeah it's very cool and cool project step and wise what, initiatives like that that start conversations like this and conversations like this are, are a catalyst to other things right to getting people involved getting not just insurance carriers involved, but people from outside the industry to come in and bring innovation into insurance, uh, as well as the, the investor community and, and, and even, you know, the public um, support from, from not just policyholders, but from, from the government as well. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, something that requires mul multiple stakeholders to, to, uh, to drive it forward, but it, it, it starts with leaders like you to, uh, to to take the initiative to start a community like this. So so kudos to you for that. Um, before we dive into the topic at hand, I always like to kind of start with just like some warm up stuff. So like, tell me about the last great meal you had. Like what like what's the last amazing meal that that stands out in your mind? <laughs> Spent all the university work in a restaurant, so um, nice. I have a big passion for food and uh, wine. And uh, I think uh -huh. that one of my last coolest experience was in Francescana. It is a three-star Michelin restaurant from uh, Massimo Bottura, that is an Italian chef. Yes. And uh, but I also try another chef from. Uh, Japan in, uh, in Milan and yeah it was a, a, an amazing amazing meal I mean basically is this is my only hobby no so I, I have work in Shurtek uh, astrophysic and uh, food yeah. as a ludic hobby that's a great it's a great hobby to have and uh, you know talking about food and wine I one of the questions that always comes up in my mind is um, is you know where are we going to get a, a good vino uh, on Mars, if if we if we go to Mars, like I don't know if, uh, <laughs> if you can grow grapes there or you know how how that's how that's going to work. But let's jump into that for a second. So like, let's talk about this Mars thing. So what's your take on you know? There's been a lot of media hype and focus ar around Mars, and uh, you know we're we're seeing some satellite imagery come back, and 
you have different people talking, you know, different opinions on it, but you know, what's your general take on, on this whole Mars uh, exploration? Uh, I, I mean, uh, we, we are studying as again as a as a human being uh, Mars since ages. So we have a lot of satellite around Mars, and uh, it's not the first rover that uh, happened to to land on the Mars surface. But the the different stuff is that we saw it. You know, I yeah. mean, it, that that's the point. No, it's, it's not the first rover. Okay, it, it's, it's the most innovative one, sure, but it's not the first one. But why everyone all over the world is speaking about it? Because now we are able to share mm -hmm. this kind of experience uh, on, on, a, on a more broad uh, basis. Yeah. You know, so in, in the moment, I mean, I mean when start to, to, to a kind of collective consciousness about mm -hmm. the fact that there are other planets okay yeah. that you can see you can touch you can smell you can hear no yeah. i mean when, when this kind of, of phenomena are shared among the community so yeah. you start to to collect uh, a lot of energy and ideas from different point of view not the astrophysic one so sociologists right. so insurance so banking so yeah. you know everyone can be interested in it uh, and everyone can have a look on, uh, on the web of these amazing images and, and at that point everyone start to think about you know the life in mars so we will drink wine on mars i don't know but i mean it's very difficult to grow stuff on, on the mars surface uh, due yeah. to the composition to the chemical composition of, of the surface but for example the agritech uh, is one of the 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 the, the the main driver of the astrophysic and aerospace uh, industry. Yeah. So how we can grow good stuff uh, on space or on the moon or in, on, on, on another planet. So all the hydroponic techniques uh, that have been developed in the last year came from the aerospace and uh, this right. is something interesting. So yeah, maybe we, we, we will be able to enjoy a good glass of wine uh, on another planet. It, it will take a lot of time and uh, a lot of investment and a lot yes. of risk to transfer because as we know yeah. not all the rockets are, are i mean arrived at the end of their no life no. <laughs> and, and and the insurance industry plays a part in insuring those those assets right already um you know i was surprised to learn that um you know aerospace insurance or uh space insurance uh started really in the 1970s um, and, you know, it was to fund these missions and a lot of it was just, you know, ensuring the assets, uh, that were being put into orbit. What, what's interesting is, um, I almost see it as a metaphor, um, not just for the insurance industry, but for humanity in general, where, you know, how, when you take a human being out of their comfort zone, um, you, you often get two reactions, you know, some people will, will just flee. And, um, you know, they're, they're scared and fear takes over. But on the other hand, you sometimes you get the best out of people and it drives innovation when you take someone out of their comfort zone um, and they're able to see something or do something and create things that they never thought were possible. And it's interesting you talk about agri-tech, right? Because um, if we weren't looking into this whole being an interplanetary species, even if, whether it's possible or not, it's forcing, it's pushing the envelope on innovation. It's forcing us to try new things because if we are going to colonize Mars, we have to be able to grow food, right? You know, that, that's, that's a basic thing. We have to be able to sustain life. Um, wh when you look at the pictures of Mars, it looks a lot like uh, a desert in Arizona, right? So if it's that type of climate, um, you know, it, it, it forces us to answer a lot of questions. A lot of questions have to be asked. But the thing I think is really cool about it is it, it has the potential to accelerate innovation in so many different areas, not just insurance, but insurance will certainly play a big part in, in the whole, um, in, in the whole uh, scheme of things. I wanted to ask you, Gerardo, um, do you, like, as far as like colonizing Mars, do you do you see that as something that um and then we'll kind of get into kind of the insurance pieces of it but do you see that as something that um you know the human race will achieve in in our lifetime um you know and it is it for everyone realistically are are we talking about this being a solution just for the few when i think about like uh the average astronaut they're like super athletes 
Um, so, so the, there's a lot in that question, but like, what's your overall take on, you know, the colonization of Mars? Do you think it's actually something that's going to happen or do you think it's just, it's more of a dream? Look, look, I mean, I think that a, a kind of Asimov scenario, you know, like the uh, Rifondazione is the title in Italian. I don't remember the title in English. So, I mean, uh, it is, it's a very long shot. Okay, yeah. and uh, as all the marathon, you have to, to, to run mile by mile, no? So the first step now is to keep improving uh, all the techniques to launch, pre-launch in, in the orbit of, of, of uh, satellite and, and, and um, astronauts and stuff in the, in, in the space, no? We, 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 we improve tremendously, no? Starting from the first test on Roscosmos, thanks also to experience like uh, SpaceX, no, no, I mean, so the, 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 the average cost for uh, every kg put in orbit is decreasing very, very fast, like like the solar energy, you know, the PV models that at the beginning was an asset super expensive and now it's very cheap and we have almost a grid parity and uh, we can produce energy thanks to renewable or, or to oil and uh, carbon at the same cost. So I think that the we keep we need to keep boosting this this kind of trend then we need to develop new new, new techniques in order to to move ourselves in the space you know because there is the, the, the this uh, this metrics and this uh, uh ratio between the, the 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 load that you put uh, on the space and the the the, yeah. the fuel and the energy that you need to to to, to put it on the space so uh, we are still fighting uh, on that on that on that stage my yeah. my opinion but yeah without any doubts we need to keep investing in uh, innovation uh, on, on the next step but the, the um, space tourism on mars at least i think that is a very long shot yeah. it, 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 it's more close something on on the mute on the moon where i mean right. we will uh, yeah, there is a lot of stuff going on on, on the moon side. Yes. And uh, uh, at that point, uh, the collaboration between the, the private sector and the public sector, I think that is a key asset. And yeah. due to the fact that it is the private sector in, in the game, and, uh, and so you have capital, private capital of people that is putting money inside the new agri-tech uh, space techniques or uh, uh, space communication or um, I mean spacecraft uh, okay yeah. we need insurance for it because till today the, the, the scope of insurance was very focused on the uh, pre-launch launch in orbit so I mean this right. was the, the transportation of the rockets that is typically a, a marine policy then is, is, the, is, the, is the launch of, of the rocket itself uh, that is the, the, the momentum of the risk mm -hmm. And then you have the orbit of the satellite. Okay, so uh, according to my experience, I've never seen specific policy for this new technology that we are experimenting on the space, starting from uh, quantum communication or again agritech. So we have policies for our crops now on the ground in the earth, and uh, maybe can be worth it to to ensure also all the experiment and all the the, the pilot that we are doing uh, in the space yeah. on this. On this topic it's very uh it is a very complex topic and uh you know i was um i was reading some articles on the uh first stages um of space exploration and astronauts actually the first astronauts who who went on the first missions there wasn't insurance uh on the actual humans that was adequate so a lot of them went through uh, fundraising efforts uh, to raise funds, you know, to almost uh, stand in the place of a life insurance policy. Um, so, you know, we and we've come, you know, very far uh, since then, you know, it's been decades since the first mission. But, you know, I, I think about um, the complexity of underwriting just on Earth. And, you know, you have things, uh, technology that's coming onto the scene or that's already on the scene that insurers are still trying to understand. Uh, like cryptocurrency, um, you know, telematics, uh, not just for the vehicle, but for the home, uh, you know, trying to be able to analyze human behavior and underwrite risk that way. Um, you, you know, so there's the, what, what comes to my mind when I think about, you know, space insurance is, okay, 
we've got you know the um, the launch piece, um, the assets in orbit and reentry. All all of those stages are covered, but it, there's the human component. You know, how are we going to provide adequate insurance? Um, you know, because I, I don't think it. The average person thinks about that right now, but if humans are going to colonize Mars, um, they're going to have at least the same as a basic starting point insurance needs on Mars as they will on Earth, and then we can make the argument on top of that that the insurance needs will actually be greater because there could be greater risks. Um, you know, like, uh, and, and again, I'm not an expert in this area, but uh, I discovered that there's over 500,000 pieces of space junk flying around in just in outer space, right? And and so you have the risks of uh, meteors and um, the atmosphere over Mars is thinner than it is on Earth. There's all those sorts of risks. And I, I guess, you know, I'm throwing this out there because in our discussions, what came out was, um, Italy as a country has really been a leader in the area of, of, uh, insurance for space and, and space exploration. Do you, do you think these are topics that the industry has really thought about deeply? Um, you know, how we will, how, how we'll actually underwrite human risk, um, at, when it comes to, to space exploration for the average person? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, thank you. It's, it's a very interesting point. I mean, um, uh, 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 I know personally one of the, the entrepreneur and uh, underwriter on space uh, insurance sector in Italy, maybe maybe the best. Mm. And uh, I think that is a matter of competence. Okay, so it's not a matter of technology but it's more a matter of competence. So it's, it's the more kind of uh, old fashioned underwriter and, and, and underwriting and, and, and there are, and there are competence in, in, in the market. So you have very good engineer and uh, astrophysics that are able to assess a risk uh, of, 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 of a launch or of, of, of a satellite. So I think that we have the, the, the starting uh, capital in order to start to build up a, a broader community, a broader insurance community focus on space. But regarding to people, I think no. I mean, I think that we need to start this kind of discussion and start to think about it. And first of all, we need to start looking back to the data that we have. It's yeah. very close to the, the cyber risk, you know, I mean, at the beginning, in the beginning of the end of 90s, beginning of 2000, now when we start to ensure cyber. We didn't have track record, no. Yeah. It was the jump in, in the dark, no. I mean, say, yeah. I mean, the rate can be this one or that one, no. And then, I mean, everything started to to, to boost, no. The the the, the hacking and uh, the, the the capital that has been stolen uh, from bank and uh, phishing and crypto locker. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the 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 cyber movie. And now we start to have a little bit of track record, no. So. Yeah. We do have a track record for, for launch and pre-launch, okay, starting from Roscosmos and, and uh, NASA and NASA, okay. But maybe what what we should do is start to, to think about what can be a, a, a real rate, uh, premium rate for, for in order to transfer this kind of risk from, mm. from the people, from the astronaut itself to the insurance, to the insurance market. And, and I think that is is super interesting because the same exercise can be done for a lot of new amazing technology okay so we do not know the rate of failure of quantum transmission mm -hmm. okay because it's something new okay right. i mean but let's let's be part of the game no i mean usually insurance is a kind of uh, late comer no in, in this in this in this kind of situation but i mean this is a great opportunity to, to merge uh, all the energy that there are uh, all, all over the world on insure tech uh, yeah. and this kind of new technology. I mean, let, let, yeah. let's do it. I mean, I mean, I know that can be a big risk, yes. but it also can be a, a, a big opportunity because uh, nowadays uh, the, space economy is, the space economy is booming, not only in US, all, yeah. all, over the, all over the world, all over right. the world, and Western world. You know what uh, it, it brings to mind is is that 
you know, the insurance industry to outsiders is often seen as a boring industry. Um, it, it, it's seen as like a default industry, something you fall into, but you never really plan to get into. And with all that's happening with insure tech and just some of the things that, you know, we talk about on a day-to-day basis, um, you know, for life and health and for home and auto and travel, um, you know, that's going to attract different types of people. But now when we get into, um, you know, things as complex as, you know, exploring other planets and, um, you know, sustainability of food and um, the environment and et cetera, insurance plays a part in all of that. And what, what I think is really cool is that that's going to attract a new type of person into the industry. Um, and, you know, you talked about, you know, understanding quantum transition and, uh, you know, the different complexities that are involved. And that means, you know, underwriters or actuaries can't just be experts at insurance. You almost need somebody with an engineering background um, or, you know, an aerospace background to come into insurance. So, and, you know, insurers have always leaned on experts to understand risks um, and sometimes even in the time of a claim. But I think there's going to be new roles created um, that we never dreamed of in the insurance industry. And it's, it's a pretty exciting thing when you think about it, um, because our, our, our needs with these complexities, our needs will become somewhat more complex. Uh, there, there might be things that we're traditionally used to having insured that insurers may not be able to, to underwrite anymore. Um, but I'm really excited at the prospect that it's going to attract new minds uh, into the industry. Um, and I think it's going to elevate the industry um, uh, as a whole. So, you know, just kind of like on, on the topic of space exploration and Mars and, and the moon, do you really think, Gerardo, it, it, is that the answer or is it just a big distraction? Are, are, are we just running away from our problems here on Earth? Like, are we, are we not really f- focusing and spending our energy on solving the big problems that we face here? Um, or do you see this as, um, as, as a worthy cause? What's your, what's your <laughs> take on that? Yeah, I, on, on that last point, uh, there is a, an amazing uh, um, sentence from Carl Sagan that was the, the head of uh, Voyager 1 operation and also a famous uh, US uh, uh, astrophysic that that it's called pale blue dot that it's pretty famous i mean that basically is one is the first interstellar selfie that has a, a that has done by the, the humanity and is uh, you know it's a very famous picture just is a picture from voyager one of our our earth so till today that planet is the only achievable uh, uh, piece of ground in the space uh, that can support our life Mm -hmm. so yeah that 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 you uh, that space uh, run can maybe sometimes be a distraction on our liabilities Mm -hmm. and i think that it's more important to keep our liabilities and our uh, duty focus on uh, make the earth a better place and uh, with 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 all our energy and money and, and, and resources uh, yeah and at the same time uh, investing on uh, space exploration but i mean like space exploration this is something is something that has to be built on the sustainability of, of our country and also the space exploration needs to be sustainable you know because uh, till today there are a lot of uh, mm, way in order to move stuff in the space like the nuclear energy that can be used starting from from the ground and and concerning the 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 first thing that you say that is the same all over the world i mean be in the insurance industry is not something that you discuss during a dinner or you are proud of no I mean, yeah you know i'm an insurance agent uh, yeah. what about you yeah i'm an astronaut i'm a doctor i'm a yeah. i'm a banker you know is the same this is a kind of uh, 300 years legacy all over the world and uh, i think that is changing i mean i'm very also also me at the beginning of my career it was a little bit ashamed about the fact yeah. that there was an in industry you know i mean all my friends made amazing job and 
yeah, I'll drink a beer and speaking about work and it was, yeah, yeah. I'm an insurance. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm very proud about it because, I mean, the insurance is, is, is very peculiar uh, tool that we developed uh, as human being again yeah. in order to, to evolve. No, so we, we started with the thought, okay, there are risks, that risk mm -hmm. can kill us or can block all the world like the COVID. Okay, let's try to think about how to transfer this risk and to increase the resiliency of right. the socioeconomic system. So it's, it's super important. And of course, if you have in your mind a, a gray guy that it's, compiling paper and asking yeah. money that doesn't want to pay when claims occur. Yeah, it's, it's very sad. But I think that this technology revolution that we are living all over the world in the insurance sector is bringing uh, a lot of energy, a lot of diversity, and Absolutely. also a lot of proud uh, about uh, this sector and all the, the, the good stuff that can do. First of all, to, to keep secure our, our planet and yeah. second, to, to, to contribute to the development of our species. Absolutely. Well, well put. And, you know, uh, I can relate to everything you just said, uh, being in the industry myself 20 years, and I didn't plan on getting in like a lot of people, but I'm certainly proud to be part of it now. And uh, one, one thing that's really great about being part of this industry is insurance literally touches everything. And, you know, even as we were preparing for this discussion, um, when we started to put out press releases and, and promos around, you know, we're going to talk about space exploration. I had a few people say to me, what the heck does it have to do with insurance? Said, you know, insurance plays actually a really important role um, in space exploration, super. right? It's super important role. And in a lot of cases, you know, it, it's not possible without uh, the backing of insurance and large reinsurers. And um, again, when you start talking about how, this will actually not uh, not just propel our our species forward, but also things like space exploration help us to better understand our needs here and forces us into a new space, uh, which is kind of leads me to my next uh, question. You know, there's a lot around uh, connected insurance. Um, so when I started thinking about, you know, how can we tie this back to problems we're trying to solve here today? Because, you know, I think we're decades out um, and we can debate whether or not we'll actually colonize other planets within our lifetimes, but I think eventually it's going to happen um, and funding will be a big part of that. But, you know, when I, when I think about some of the future needs uh, that, are, that are also relevant here on earth, Connected insurance is, is a big part of that. So, you know, a lot of people have, you know, Google products or, you know, other products in their home that are connected to multiple devices under their roof. Um, you know, you have the connected car. Um, I'm wearing a Fitbit monitor that's monitoring my heart rate as I'm talking to you, my breathing, you know, how many steps I take in a day, um, you know, so there's all this potential with connected insurance. Where do you feel the industry? And the reason I'm, I'm positioning this with you today is, you know, you're, you're in Italy and, and in the European market, actually Italy in particular has led the way, you know, car insurance is usually that entry point, that loss leader, because, you know, it's mass market um, where telematics has been present in Italy, I think for the past 10 or 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. and Correct. Uh, a large percentage of, of vehicles in Italy have yeah, almost 40%, 40%. Yeah. So tell can you tell me a bit about what has the Italian insurance industry learned about, uh, driving behavior and connected insurance? What, what use cases have, has the industry taken from that experience, um, that would help us, uh, evolve as an industry from, from your point of view? Uh, I mean, uh, regarding the, the, the um, motor insurance, the, the, the Italian business is like uh, 16 billion euro of gross premium. And uh, yeah, we love to own cars in Italy. You yeah. know, I mean, we, lo we love to build cars, to manufacture cars, and uh, to it's own nice cars. cars too. Yeah, yeah. And nice cars too. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, it, yeah, almost everyone has a car. And, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a great business. 
And when this uh, telematics uh, uh, trend start, uh, uh, we were one of the, the first countries in Europe and uh, we had a, a very unexpected uh, penetration of this kind of device. Of course, we are speaking about uh, old style device, so black box installed in the car. Mm. And uh, yeah, we raise a lot of data and the premium uh, for, for motor insurance in Italy are very aggressive and competitive. So this kind of uh, uh, data gathering uh, increase the competition and increase the value also for the consumer that at the end of the game is, 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 our, uh, is our lord regarding the, 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 the construction of, uh, of products. But I think that today we, we are facing a, a huge challenge that are the new generation devices for IoT and connected cars. So I'm speaking about SDK integrated with mobile. That is a, is a, is a big trend in a UBI uh, of the new car. Like uh, the, the think about the fact that the the, the premium, the InsurTech Awards for the best innovative product uh, has won by Toyota in Italy. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, because yeah, they develop a, a paper use insurance starting from their data that right. they have in in their car. I know that in US Tesla is doing the same uh, and starting to 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 open up the licenses for uh, as your own insurance company. So I think that regarding the mobility, we 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 are assisting uh, yeah in Italy, but I think according to my knowledge all over the world, because a nice thing of the insure tech and the digital revolution that make the stuff global, you know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you start to think about your country, but at the end, I think that in India is, is happening the same, in China is happening the same, in US mm -hmm. is happening the same. So yeah, maybe it's not Italy, it's the, it's the mobility, you know, that it is changing all over the world and insurance is following this yeah. kind of change, you know, the sharing economy. Then, of course, you have country where, where you have more uh, uh, more adopters about, for example, sharing economy. Like I, I think that New York or London, for example, or also here in Milan, mm. in comparison with other cities, the sharing mobility is more developed. Yeah, yeah. but again, it is a worldwide situation. So, oh, yeah, I think that, 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 that for insurance industry, what we learn about the past is that with more data mm -hmm. you can stay on the market absolutely yeah so you cannot make more money you know what i mean i mean you can right. stay on the market because yeah. the innovation can arrive from everywhere can 100%. arrive from toyota can arrive from tesla can arrive from uh, apple or, or some yeah uh, app developer you know absolutely uh, so yeah the data gathering and the iot increase uh, the, the competition among the stakeholder inside the ecosystem and yes. increase the value for the final customer. That that that's my point of view. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, like great thoughts there. And you know, to me, it it creates. Uh, you talk about keeping your place, like just maintaining your market share. It doesn't necessarily act as a tool to grow. Um, and uh, you know, I think the industry might be guilty of complacency, just a little bit of like thinking that, you know, we own the space, no one else understands insurance, but that's, that's being proven wrong. If that mindset was true 20, 30, 40 years ago, fine. But you, now that you see companies like Tesla, like Google, uh, getting involved in, in insurance, and in some cases they might even be more effective at understanding risk, uh, in, in, in some cases, I think it, it pushes the industry forward. Um, because it, you know, things like connected cars and connected homes are not going away. Um, and I always find it interesting. And, and I don't know if this, if this comes up because I would, I would view Italy as a more <clears throat> mature market, uh, from the, at least the connected car standpoint, uh, when I compare to markets like Canada or United States, the United States is further ahead of, from Canada, but we, we tend to lag the U S in some cases we, we lead. Uh, but in, in, on this particular topic, we we are lagging. A lot of people talk about uh, privacy when it comes down to connected insurance, and I, I understand that being the initial reaction. But you know, everything we do is monitored. Like anybody who walks around with a smartphone, every move you make is is monitored. Every site you search 
is monitored by and monetized in a lot of cases by somebody. Um, so, you know, has the industry done a good job of promoting connected insurance? Because, you know, at least where I sit, I, I don't think we have done a good job. And uh, I'm making an assumption uh, based on your your penetration that, you know, 40% adoption rate is really high from my point of view. Why do you think it is that there's been greater adoption uh, in, in the Italian experience? Uh, is it because the industry's done a better job educating the consumer or or is there another factor oh i think that is more a, a commercial uh, issue so the the, yeah. the point to do not be monitored uh, yet yeah, can be privacy related and uh, in europe we have the gdpr that is a very strong law about the data governance but also can be a kind of anti-selection anti-selection you know so yeah. i have a ferrari i love to run i do not have a ferrari i mean i was an exception. <laughs> you might have a model, model one, right? That you sit on the <laughs> shelf. Yeah, yeah. I can borrow for our, I love to to run. I mean, I'm not so such an, a, a nice driver. I'm a little bit aggressive, maybe. You know, and why I have to share this behavior with my insurer? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, what happened in Italy that all the people that uh, allow the company to use their data and install the black box received an insane discount. On their premium right you know so that, that's the point of the adoption and then you have uh, an anti-selection because uh, basically the consumer that is open to i mean it, it's very transparent and it's open to 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 share all its data i mean typically is a good consumer is a good is a good is a good customer and and uh, that, that that was the main driver of the 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 this kind of, of penetration so it was a commercial driven right for the future for the next future i don't know if the point will be the price i'm expecting that the point will be more the flexibility of the products and the paper use of the products uh, in the last year i used the car a couple of times due to the lockdown so i can suspend my 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 insurance but yeah, you know, I, I, things are changing, and and the way are changing, uh, in my opinion, uh, are, are are of course data driven, but the key point will be the product development. Is that the adoption started in the commercial side? So, is is the adoption uh, as strong on personal insurance, or is it still predominantly in commercial? In in the when when I, when, I, when I use the words uh, commercial, I meant uh, sales. So it was a marketing strategy. Okay. Uh, Italy, we have an underinsured uh, under situation, uh, both for uh, retail and commercial line. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and that's like, because um, part of the dynamic that we're experiencing here is there, <clears throat> there are challenges uh, when you talk about personal and commercial on the personal side there is more protection around privacy, also accessibility. It has to be available to everybody. If it's not available to everybody, then, then it can't be sold. So, you know, I might live, I live close to Toronto. So we have a lot of uh, broadband service, you know, 4G and all the rest of it. But if I'm in a rural part of the province or I'm further north, uh, there might not be the satellite reception, et cetera, to support. Uh, uh, connected vehicle. So it can't be offered to the entire province. That actually eliminates everyone at that point. Um, so there's a lot of protection because they don't want um, insurance companies being discriminatory based on where somebody might live. Um, so for in, in our experience, it's been the commercial, <clears throat> the commercial market that has higher adoption because those same regulatory constraints don't exist in the commercial market. So you get trucking companies, taxi companies uh, that mm. are adopting it. Those companies also traditionally pay more for insurance uh, because they're higher risk. Um, sure. So, so, so that's kind of the dynamic that we've um, we've been experiencing here in Canada uh, and to a lesser extent in the U S because they still use things like credit to, to uh, assess risk in the U S. Um, so 
I'm wondering just, uh, I guess, to finish like on the telematics topic and, and it, it, uh, I want to be clear, this applies to more than just cars. Uh, cause you know, it's so many different things are connected, but cars tend to be the starting point, um, is video. So when you talk about black box and, you know, plugging in something to the OBD connector in the car, that's reading the data. What about the visual component? Is there anything uh, in, in the Italian market that you've seen where there's actual, like a webcam taking in video and compressing that video and analyzing what's happening in the environment around the car? Um, and perhaps even with a facial recognition layer as well. Is that something that is 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 prominent yeah, in, in your market? Yeah, actually, uh, I don't know about uh, use case uh, with this kind of angle. What I know is that, of course, the, the visual uh, has been used in an UBI where the car are, uh, of course, uh, integrated with 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 camera, and uh, not strictly related to the to the video, but can be similar. The new SDK for, for uh, um, mobility data that you can integrate in your mobile and your app uh, track uh, if you use the mobile during the driving. Right. It is, is, is a great so trigger. It's, it's so if, through if, the if you look, uh, yeah, if you, if you are using WhatsApp, WhatsApp during, during your drive, uh, you can be charged about for this right. kind of, uh, of behavior. And that, that actually is a good stuff because uh, Again, in the 90s, you know, one of the first uh, trends were uh, alcohol and uh, weather condition, you know, I mean, and this, the, the use of mobile phone during the driving is now, it's, it's a big driving. issue. Yeah. It's a it's big a, issue. It's a global issue for sure. And I, I, I mm -hmm. think uh, telematics plays a big part of that part in preventing that. Um, and, and so... I just thought it was an interesting topic and, and, you know, we can expand on that in another discussion, but um, you know, there, the privacy piece I think is, is a bit of an excuse uh, for people not to try something new because, uh, and perhaps the industry needs to do a better job educating the consumer on what are the benefits. Uh, and you, I like what you mentioned, how there was an incentive uh, offered to the consumer to adopt uh, the telematics product and if they receive an instant discount, you know, that's after all, they should be rewarded <clears throat> for providing that level of detail. Um, it, uh, to me, that just makes sense. Uh, some, some closing thoughts, Gerardo, around just, you know, the insure tech community in general, uh, globally, uh, you're, you're in Milan, I'm here in Toronto. Uh, we're talking about you know, topics that are important to the industry, the future of the industry and the evolution of the industry. What do you think uh, the insure tech community is doing really well? And where do you think we can improve as far as, you know, being more connected from a global uh, standpoint to help push the industry uh, forward in a more holistic way? I mean, what we're doing well in the last years is just, in Italy, but again, I think that is something globally. We we grown up uh, and we we exit from the paradigm, you know, of the startup in tech then is disruptive and destroy the market and this is the new this is the future. We are, and we 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 grown up and now we're working on the ecosystem and uh, and we're incumbent and a startup works together and teach together where there are the, 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 the key challenges of the industries for both parties. And, and this is something that is working, I think, all over the world. And so this, this uh, um, story, you know, about the, the disruption, this buzzword of the disruption is, is, is coming to an end, you know? And now we're starting with the, the uh, other, other keywords that are competition, uh, that are investment, that are R&D, that are incumbent and startup that works together to build up a real digital revolution. This is a very good point and that point will give us a lot of success in, in the near future. I'm, I'm sure about it because it's a win-win-win it's a methodolo methodology to, 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 to develop an industry, okay? Yeah. What we, we should improve, I think, that is 
doing stuff like this one. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm super committed on, on the Italian market. Um, yeah, you know, I have a 24 hour every day. So yeah. uh, I have to spend and to allocate these hours in a wise way. And uh, work, speaking about work, I'm super focused on the Italian market. I think that the contamination worldwide uh, can be very easy. And we are not doing enough contamination about use case, about mm. investment, about uh, webinar course, uh, and fight for some issue or uh, work together for another. You know, building up a real worldwide community. You know, and I think that is is is, is a, a weakness point of uh, the global community because uh, I believe uh, that the core values all over the world in the insurance community are the same. So all the people that I know right. in, in, my, in my life during this InsurTech uh, journey are, are motivated by, by the same topic, that are innovation, yeah. I mean, build up a, a, a better world for their child and environment and uh, R&D and uh, you know how to, to, to promote cool stuff and build up brand new product, how to uh, renew and transform the incumbent company in, and put them in, in the 2021. So, and, and yeah, the energy was the same. So I think that can be very easy to build up uh, a worldwide discussion uh, on it. Absolutely. And I, I, I think we, we, we stand to learn a lot from each other um, and, you know, similar to, um, I like how you talked about initially insured tech was seen as a disruptor to the industry and, and perhaps it was, uh, in its early stages, but it shouldn't be seen as a threat. Um, it's, it, it's a necessity. Uh, it's the industry needs it and needs to embrace it. And likewise, the way I view conversations like this and collaborating, uh, across the globe with other insure tech communities is we have so much to learn from each other and no market, even if you're the largest economy in the world can do it on their own. So likewise, we shouldn't be threatened by each other. We should be having more of these discussions to understand who's leading in what areas um, and, you know, how we can build off of each other's experiences uh, for the betterment of the industry. And, and you're, you're hundred percent correct on the core values piece. That's why I started InsureTech Canada. Um, you know, I'm one person uh, out of millions that's involved in this industry, but we need to have more dialogue and more discussions like this um, and to shine a light on, on innovation and to also create a sense of urgency um, around, you know, the evolution of this industry. Um, and I, I personally want to attract more, uh, I want to motivate more people from within the industry to step forward and support in innovation. But I also want to encourage more people who are not in the industry today to see this as a place where they can build a long-term fulfilling career where they are contributing to society in a positive way. And insurance does that. And we need to do a better job, I think, as an industry, educating um, the, uh, the public on how, can, how insurance positively contributes to society. And um, InsureTech is just one of those, uh, one of those tools in our, in our toolbox. So this was a great conversation, Gerardo. I feel like we could, uh, I say this to a lot of guests, I feel like we could talk for hours. But in, in, in this case, uh, it, it's certainly true. We've gone on for almost 60 minutes here. Uh, I would like to have a follow-up conversation on the space exploration piece. I think it's, again, something that we could unpack over multiple segments, but this was a great introductory conversation, I think. Uh, were there any closing thoughts from you uh, just around, you know, uh, uh, any areas of focus as far as InsureTech uh, Italy uh, is concerned? Um, do you guys have any events coming up that you want to promote? And uh, if you want to share with the audience where where we can find you online if they want to learn more about what your association is up to. 
Uh, yeah, they can find us to insurtechitaly.com or on LinkedIn. That is the main social media where we are active. Our main event is on September. So I hope that we will have another opportunity to, to talk each other in uh, this kind of initiative. And uh, I, I will promote our summit during our next uh, talk. And sorry to everyone for my English actually my international experience was in China, so I, I learned English <laughs> in China and in Belgium. So, yeah. Well, you sorry me. Yeah, because uh, your English is much better than my Italian. So, uh, you know, <laughs> we had no trouble following along here. So it was great conversation, Gerardo. Thank you very much. Um, and you know, grazie from uh, all of your friends here in Canada and from all of our, our listeners. And um, yeah, looking forward to the next conversation. Thanks again for making the time today. Grazie a voi. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.